Okay, so in the first exam question, we're told the total amount of money, which means we need to work out the total amount of parts. So here's the ratio. Pip gets four parts and Ali gets one part. So if I add those numbers together, I can find the total number of parts, which is five. So that total amount of money, $785, must be equal to five parts in this question. So we have to work out the share that Pip gets, okay? And Pip, when we look at the ratio, gets four parts in his share. So we need to work out what the value of four parts is. But before we can do that, we need to work out the value of one part. So if we've got five parts, and we need to work out what one part is, we need to divide by five. Because five divided by five is one. So I must do the same with that amount of money here. I have to divide it by five. So if I divide 785 by five, I get 157. So now that we know how much one part is, $157, we can work out Pip's share. Because Pip is four parts, so we just need to multiply that answer by four. So if I times by four, that number there, so 157 multiplied by four, I get 628. So that is the share that Pip gets. second exam question is a little bit different because we don't need to work out the total number of parts in the ratio because we haven't been told the total of Anne and Ben's heights. This time we're only told the height of Anne, 1.4 metres. So when I look at the ratio here, Anne's height is written first, so Anne's height consists of seven parts and Ben's height consists of nine parts. And because we're given Anne's height, and Anne is seven parts, we need to put those seven parts equal to her height. So 1.4 metres is equal to seven parts. Now remember, the question is to work out Ben's height, and Ben has nine parts, okay, in his height. So we need to work out the value of nine parts. But just like before, before we can do that, we need to work out the value of one part. So if we've got seven parts, and we need to work out what one part is, we just divide by seven, because seven divided by seven is one. So I must do the same on the other side, and I have to divide this height by seven as well. So when I do 1.4 divided by seven, I get 0 0.2 meters, or if you like, 20 centimeters. So one part is equal to 0 0.2 meters. So the last step, is to work out Ben's height, and remember, Ben's height is nine parts, so we have to multiply that answer here by nine, because one part multiplied by nine gives me nine parts, and so over here, if I multiply by nine, I get 1.8. So that is Ben's height, 1.8 meters. Okay, so this exam question is very similar to the first one in that we're told the total amount of money that they pay for the horse, $21,600. So that means we need to work out the total amount of parts in the ratio. So we've got two, three and four parts in the ratio. So we need to add those numbers together to work out the total amount of parts. So now that we've got the total amount of money and the total number of parts in the ratio, we can put those equal to each other. So we've got 21,600, which is equal to nine parts. So in this question, we've got three calculations, we've got three answers that we need to come up with. We have to work out the amount that each of them pay for the horse. So we need to work out Kylie, which is two parts, Rio, which is three parts, and finally Troy, which is four parts. So to start with, just like in the other ratio questions, I'm going to work out the value of one part. And then from there, we can work out our final calculations. So if I've got nine parts, but I need to find one part, I must divide by nine, because nine divided by nine gives me one. So I need to divide this amount of money by nine as well. And when I do that, I get $2,400. 
So we've worked out one part. So now we just have to work out two parts, three parts, and finally four parts. So to work out two parts, we just multiply one part by two. So I need to do the same with this amount, and I need to multiply by two. So when I do that, I get 4,800. So the two parts is how much Kylie pays. So we've worked out Kylie's share. Now for Rio, we have to work out three parts. So this time, we have to multiply one part by three. So I need to do 2,400 multiplied by three. which gives me 7,200, okay? So there's Rio share. And finally, we have to work out how much Choi pays, which is four parts. So now I need to multiply 2,400 by, you've probably guessed it, four, okay? So when I do that, I get 9,600. Okay, so I've worked out how much each of them pays for the horse. question and in the first part we have to show that Mrs Singh has 32 students in her class. So watch out for these show that questions. You can't use the number 32 during your calculation. You just need to use that to check your final answer. So you're just working out the total number of students that she has and hopefully your final calculation will be 32. Okay, and if it isn't, you need to go back and check what you've done because you've made a mistake somewhere. So, in this question, we're told there are 20 girls, and when I look at the ratio here, girls take up five parts. So those 20 girls are equal to five parts. So, just like in the other examples, the next step is to work out what one part is equal to. So, if we have five parts and we need to know the value of one part, we just divide by five, since five divided by five is one. So I do the same with that number 20, and I divide by five as well. So 20 divided by five is four. So we now know that one part is equal to four girls. So remember, we're trying to show the total number of students. So we need to know the total number of parts in the ratio. So we've got, five parts plus three parts, which is eight parts altogether. So we're trying to calculate what eight parts are equal to. So if we've got one part and we need eight parts, we need to multiply that one part by eight in order to find eight parts. And so I do the same with this number four over here. I multiply the number four by eight, which gives me 32, and it's students this time, not girls. So there we go, we've shown that she has 32 students in her class. So it's really important that you show all you're working out, dividing by five, multiplying by eight, show that one part is equal to four girls, because that's what will get you the marks in this question. Okay, on to the second part. Okay, so before we can work out the ratio of the total number of girls to the total number of boys, we need to know how many girls and boys there are in each class. We know from part one that Mrs Singh has 20 girls in her class and she has a total of 32 students. So from that, we can calculate the number of boys in her class. We can do 32, which is the total, minus the number of girls, 20, which leaves us with 12. So there are 12 boys in her class. So we know how many girls and boys there are in Mrs Singh's class. Now we need to look at Mr Patel's class. It tells us that Mr. Patel has 40 students in total. So we need to know the total number of parts in the ratio here. So three parts plus two parts is five parts. So we need to put the total number of students in his class equal to the total number of parts in the ratio. So that's 40 students equal to five parts. Now, 
Just like in the previous questions, we need to work out the value of one part. So if we've got five parts, but we need to work out one part, we must divide by five, because five divided by five is one. So I do exactly the same with this number 40, and I divide it by five as well. So that leaves me with eight. So we know that in Mr. Patel's class, one part is equal to eight students. So now we can work out the number of boys and girls. If we look at the ratio here, girls is three parts. So if I work out girls to start with, so three parts, I just multiply that one part by three. So if I times this number eight by three, I get 24. And remember, that was girls. So he has 24 girls in his class. Now, boys are just two parts. So this time we go back to one part, but we multiply by two instead. So if I multiply, so going back to one part again, and multiplying by two. So if I multiply that number eight by two, I get 16. So there are 16 boys in his class. Alternatively, you could do the total number of students minus the girls that we worked out, and it would give you exactly the same answer. So there's more than one way of doing it there. So now we know all the girls and the boys, the numbers in the two different classes, we can start writing down the ratio. So we need to do the ratio of the total, total number of girls. Okay, so there are 20 girls in Mrs. Singh's class and there are 24 girls in Mr. Patel's class. So there are 44 girls all together. So that was G for girls. Now for the boys, there were 12 boys in Mrs. Singh's class and 16 boys in Mr. Patel's class. So all together, there were 30 boys. So now we can write down the ratio. So girls comes first, so 44, to boys, which is 30 not forgetting to give your answer in its simplest form. If you don't know how to simplify ratios, I do have another video on that, so you might want to check that out. Otherwise, you just have to look for a common factor in those two numbers. Is there a number that you can divide both of these by? You can divide them both by two. Two is a common factor. So when I divide 44 by two, I get 22. And if I divide 30 by 2, I get 15. So that is the final answer. That is the ratio in its simplest form. We can't simplify it again because there's no common factor in those two numbers.